Creating a dance based on the physical decline that comes with age and disease may seem counterintuitive, yet that's exactly what's happening on this stage. MADCO, or Modern American Dance Company, recently staged four dance performances called Alive Inside, looking at physical decline through the lens of dance. It's kind of ironic, in a way, to use dance and movement with the intention of detailed control and that's obtainable through ongoing training and this yearning to, to soar to represent people living with a disease who control over their body is constantly going to be challenging. MADCO is known for being unconventional and Alive Inside is certainly no exception. Oh, that's interesting timing. Suzanne Ryan Strati is a Kansas City choreographer. Her contribution to Alive Inside was a piece called Say Yes. The soundtrack included the voices of people living with Parkinson's disease. The Parkinson's that I have has I mean, drastically changed my life. Not, not for the better. And there's no cure, so he just, he just continues to go downhill and go downhill and go downhill. So a couple of years ago, I went into five people's homes and interviewed them about their daily life, um, memories from when they were growing up, um, how things are today, how the future looks, things that they want to enjoy, continue enjoying. I asked them about their diagnosis and how they knew they had it, some symptoms they had. We took those interviews and then I cut them down from an hour and a half <laughs> down to what is about three minutes of dance for this performance. What was your favorite memory of me? They were all a good memory. The poignancy of loss is expressed through the dance performance, as is the resiliency of the human spirit. When I approached the people who I interviewed and told them I wanted to ask them about their life, for some of them, they didn't know what was going to happen with the text that they would be giving me, with their stories. And to have somebody interested in your story and want to share it with people in public, it takes a little thought before committing. <laughs> but in a way, they felt really honored. Are you related to the Parkinson's estate where they go into the arm yeah. and they flip? MADCO commissioned choreographer Gina Patterson to create a work that examined aging. Her dance, called Rooted, was set to music, but also based on interviews. What ins has really come to inspire this piece is the fact of passing on stories for generations. And I feel like a lot of cultures have that act of storytelling, uh, oral storytelling, and tribes and generations that are raising a family. And I think we've lost a bit of that in the Western culture. Some of the interviewees had a moment in the spotlight, interacting with the dancers on stage during the performance at the Two Hill Theater. When we touched their hair or their body, I remembered my children, and for a minute I flashed back. It's a manufactured situation, but I mean, we're talking about generations and sharing and love, and I really felt that in the moment while they were dancing. Taking the time to listen to somebody's story that, um, has this aspect of healing and I always thought it was for the person telling the story but I really think it's on both ends of things because I found find myself now carrying their stories with me as I walk around through my day and seeing through their eyes. A piece called An Alternate You by James Craig examined the concept of physical and emotional barriers. It was commissioned by Dance St. Louis in 2018 and choreographer Christian Denise reflected on the effects of autism in his dance called Spectrum.
My mother was a special ed teacher for um, about 15 years and she in particular had one student that would come over to our house a lot and she was a nonverbal um, autistic child. She at the time was 21, so she was older, and um, just watching them interact, I th just thought it was so fascinating. Um, it's, you know, nonverbal communication, and I thought, well, as a dancer, that's often what we do as well, you know, nonverbal communication to portray and give off emotion and feeling. What I think really inspired the piece for me was these moments of chaos and then this like one clear moment where like my mom and her students would like make eye contact or have this genuine touch or like touch of the hand where you just go, wow, someone is really in there and someone has a full capacity to love and care and do all these things that technically they're not supposed to based on their diagnosis. People in wheelchairs aren't supposed to be in a dance performance either, but the unexpected is a MADCO trademark. It's not necessarily about the aging, bo you know, aging body as much as this sense of vastness within the piece, maybe. It's more about this, the story of disconnection and wanting to connect. The warmth and comfort that the dancers and the attention that the dancers actually gave me, actually holding my hand, gave me the confidence to participate. We felt like we were a part of it, like we were part of MADCO and we were and we were contributing and it, it, we feel like we're part of the MADCO family now. I'm grateful and thankful to them to pass on and open up and be so vulnerable, you know, in sharing their stories. It will forever change me. MADCO is continuing the tradition of examining serious topics through modern dance. Watch for their newest creation in the coming months. The Unity Movement is based on interviews with people from diverse St. Louis neighborhoods who describe what they love, fear, and desire for their communities.